Hey friends, this is Brian from This Is Tech Today, and if you're like me, you've probably been looking for a smart home camera for some time, but a lot of the options out there are really expensive. They're like $200 or more, and on top of that, they have a subscription fee that you have to pay just to get some standard features. But I found a really great one for only $26, and it's called the Wisecam. The Wisecam is a tiny $26 smart home camera with some free Amazon AWS cloud storage. I promise you, it's way better than what you expect for $26, and I bought three more. The Wisecam supports a 1080p HD camera that has both a daytime camera mode and a night vision mode that uses IR lights. The daytime mode looks decent. It auto adjusts ISO so that the footage is properly exposed. It looks decent and has a very wide field of view. 110 degrees to be exact. There's also a night vision mode that uses IR lights. It'll pick up things from about 30 feet away. So if you look at the front of the camera and when it's in night vision mode, you can see these little red lights on there. So you can see them. There's actually two of them and I'm really surprised at how much light they're putting out. It's great as a baby monitor, but it's not so great if you put it up against a window though. The light reflects against it and using the normal daytime camera may actually end up looking better depending on how much light you have outside. Like for example, a street lamp. If it's really just pitch black out there, you may just choose the night vision mode still because it's better than nothing. And they do mention that you shouldn't use this outside because it's not intended to handle the different elements of the weather. There's a little microphone on the Wise Cam and it's okay. You can listen and hear what's going on in the room, but don't expect any spectacular audio from it. Hey, do you mind? I'm trying to make a video here. can't work under these conditions. You can also utilize the app to talk through it because there's a little tiny speaker in the camera itself. I guess you could have a conversation with someone else on the other end if you wanted to, but I mean, it's not that great. The whole audio and microphone experience is overall kind of a cheap sound, but it's better than nothing. It is super flexible in terms of how you can orient it. It even includes a magnetic stand, so you can just hang on to a metal surface like I have here on my bed. Or you can use the metal plate that comes with it, and that metal plate has an adhesive on one side, so you just put it onto a wall or another surface, and there's no need for a screw. And since you may mount the camera upside down, there is an option to rotate the image 180 degrees. Unfortunately, there's not an option to rotate it 90 degrees. Some people were wondering, hey, what's that USB jack on the back for? Well, that's so you can daisy chain these cameras together. The cable that comes with it is super long so you can just connect it to one camera and to the next. On the software side, there is a 12 second notification video alert that you can have, and this is stored for about 14 days. It's triggered by sound, motion, smoke, a CO2 alarm if you wanted to, and I think it has maybe about a five to 10 minute cool off period, which means after one alert has triggered the recording, it won't trigger another one for another five or 10 minutes. And there's an ability to schedule when the alerts actually are active. So if you're home at five o'clock and you don't want it to constantly trigger, you can choose to have it activate between eight and 5 p.m. when you're at work. And 12 second little videos at like different intervals can be a bit lackluster in many ways. Uh, so you can actually expand the memory of it using a micro SD card. There's a little slot at the bottom of the device there. And I purchased a 32 gigabyte card. And from what I've heard, that will record up to three days of continuous video. So the SD card opens you up to a variety of different settings. You can create a time lapse. You can choose to capture a photo of the very moment that you're looking at when you're streaming. You can even record a video of that very moment. And the best part of having an SD card is the playback. And there's two different options you can pick from in terms of how it records. There's continuous non-stop recording, and then you can also have one that's based upon event. So if it notices movement in the video, it'll start recording then. And then I'll expand the length of time that you're able to record for. Set for the device isn't too bad. First of all, you have to download the Wise app and create an account. Then go ahead and click the plus icon to add a device. And there's this little button on the bottom of the camera that you have to push. It'll give you a little prompt to connect. Then you hit the button at the bottom that says ready to connect. You'll put in your Wi-Fi information there and then you click next. Ready to connect. And there's this fancy little QR code thing where you just point the camera at it and it'll sync it up. QR code scanned. Please wait. Click on the next button and then it'll connect for you. Setup completed. Go ahead and name the camera. If there are any firmware updates, this is when you would install them. And that's it.
there are some cons about this other than the audio and mic quality being a little bit subpar. When you're viewing the playback, scrubbing is a bit hard. When you're moving between any of the old footage, it doesn't show you a live view of what you're looking through. You kind of have to just tap around and hope that you end up in the right spot. I have found that having the recording based upon events is better than continuous recording because it shows you specifically where you need to go to actually see something that's actually happening. When you're looking at the various cameras, there's no live view of what it's actually looking at. And it's not even a recent image. You have to go into the camera look at a live view there, and then it'll refresh on the homepage. The schedule that I talked about is a bit limited as well because it's only based upon time. It doesn't allow you to change the schedule based upon day and time. And it doesn't have a lot of those AI features that a Nest Cam would have. So if you have any pets, it'll constantly trigger this device unless you kind of frame the camera in a certain way where it doesn't see down around the floor or anything like that. So if you're not familiar with some of those AI features, you can set it up where you can select a certain area in the video for it to constantly ignore. So if there's any movement there, it will not trigger any of the alerts. This one doesn't have that. And then there's no web viewer. So all of this has to occur within the mobile app. And it works for iOS and Android, so you're probably covered, but, but sometimes you like to look at this stuff on your computer. It's sometimes more convenient that way. And along with that, being able to export the photos and videos isn't exactly the most intuitive experience. You can still export things, but you have to save it to your Google Photos or to your Dropbox or Google Drive. It's just not directly saving to your gallery. But despite some of those downsides, it's only $26. A Nest Cam costs about $200, so you can buy about eight of these for the price of one Nest Cam. And if you are getting an SD card with this, you can get about five or six of these with that memory for the price of one Nest Cam. And there's no monthly fees. On top of that, they do have US-based customer service. And one of the biggest things I've noticed and I really love about it is that they have tremendous community involvement. They're incredibly active on their own subreddit, their Twitter, their Facebook, everywhere. They're phenomenal. They even have their own forum. They're constantly taking in feedback, feature requests, and they're implementing them. It's really quite good. So if you're looking for an inexpensive baby monitor or just general monitoring of your home and you don't need those fancy AI features, this is a great option. So what are your thoughts? Are you thinking about getting one of these? If you're interested in purchasing them, I do have some links down below in my description and I would really appreciate if you bought it through those links because I make a small commission if you buy it through those links. If you have any other questions for me or would just like the chat, go ahead and leave some comments down below. I'll be down there for you. And while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out as a small YouTuber and if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We're really close to 10,000. Thank you. I also have some videos off to the side, so go ahead and check some of those out. Thanks again for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.